Good day to you. So, recently, a friend of mine, Sam Rowley, won a competition you may have heard of with a photo that you've likely seen. This fine looking gent is Sam, and in 2019 he took what is debatably one of the most well known wildlife photos of a generation. Gotta look sexy. <laughs> you know it's recording, yeah? No, <laughs> I know. This shot won the People's Choice Award in the Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition, and when it did, it got quite the reaction online. A combined total of around 40,000 retweets on Twitter and 70,000 likes on Instagram. Much to Sam's delight, it was even shared by the likes of Joseph Gordon Levitt, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Frodo himself. This is what so many photographers and perhaps creatives in general dream of, right? The pursuit of that perfect shot, that moment where you dare to think you've got it, and then it all being confirmed by a big win in a competition and it becoming a viral sensation online. So when you've hit that goal, what do you do next? Well, just a few months before all this happened, Sam told me about a new project he was starting in a graveyard of all places, and invited me along for the recce. Oh. I'm gonna slip, I'm gonna slip, <laughs> I'm gonna slip. <laughs> I haven't slipped. <laughs> Alright, should we go on a little explore? Let's do it. So I'm currently in a graveyard with Sam Rowley, just looking at sites for the first time. Yeah. What are you thinking from there? Our initial recce. So what is it you're looking for with your camera trap spots? I'm looking for two major things. Oh, three. A badger would be good. Um, gothic. Gothic nature. And... A tomb, like, like, an, like, an, like a really impressive tomb. It's obviously a tomb, obviously in a graveyard. But this one is cool. You get a badger here, tick. You get a gothic tick, but tomb is not really obviously a tomb. It's just a dilapidated brick structure. So we will move on. <laughs> so step one, exploring and just seeing what there is. Looking at potential sites. The very early stages, the exciting stage. Different style, I love it. We could camera trap fairies, that might work. I reckon that'd get in. Wildlife photography. I think really that good. might get in. An actual fairy. Because obviously they used to exist and I don't want to think so, but um, true. They've been flocks of millions over the American prairies and now they're. What is the collective noun for a fairy? A uh, charm. Oh! That was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, oh! I... Snap! That is cool. Ooh. That is really, really good. Ooh. That is really good, that's just what I'm going to see if the badger can get in there. Any badger marks around it? Or? No, not that I can see. I'm not the best, that's a shame though. Cause I'm gonna you know what, I'm going to take a photo of my phone, that's how excited. Yeah, go for it. Mate, that looks so good. So what's the benefit in taking photos? I need to take photos so that I can geolocate the locations I'm in inevitably going to forget over time. And I can come back and conquer them and attract badgers to them. So that's the plan. What are you saying about the box? This box will turn into a bag at some stage. <laughs> Thanks for filming this though, Matt. I really appreciate that. So I was just chatting to Sam about, oh, you don't want footprints in the, in the shot, about his first setup and talking about actually the amount of gear that's being left here. And something was revealed that if you're a, a camera nut, you, you might be a little surprised. So this, is, this does get locked at night, but it gets locked at sunset. So are you waiting until sunset before leaving? No. It's all about who you know, Matt. Most of it isn't mine. Which is <laughs> <laughs> even better. To be fair, Sam did later justify his relaxed manner by explaining the cemetery was littered with CCTV. So, with very little experience with camera traps between us, Sam started setting it up and I mainly provided moral support in the form of standing around and pointing at things that I thought looked important, occasionally stopping to interrupt his thought process by trying to get him to speak to camera. So this is your first setup, how are you feeling? Ooh, hello. We have a flash. Eventually though, after a fair bit of battery swapping and tinkering with various cables and connections, we got it all working perfectly. And yes, I'm sticking with Wii. It was now just a matter of time. So the aim, hopefully, we're gonna follow Sam doing this project right up until the point he gets into wildlife photography. And if, if, if that takes 20 years, it takes 20 years. It's gonna be a long video, guys. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a long video. Well, not really, because a few months later, this happened. So shortly after the media frenzy that was inevitable, we met up for a coffee and a catch up and I asked him all about it. It's been a while since I've seen Sam, since we last saw him. He's had some pretty big news. Hello everyone. <laughs> You're used to these now, aren't you? I am. <laughs> yeah, wow. How is it, man? 
Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, a little bit overwhelmed and flabbergasted by yeah, the yeah. whole thing. But, you know, um, slowly coming to terms with what's happened. Nice. And yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. there. Nice. Um, it's just like, just like to take some time to digest it all. Yeah, yeah. It's been absolutely madness and I never oh, thought mate. in a million years that it would have I'd have the week that I've just had. <laughs> but yeah, I'm looking forward to telling you all about awesome. it. Awesome. Let's grab a coffee. <laughs> He's like, oh, have you seen, have you seen his Instagram? <laughs> I was like, no, why? Yeah. 1,800 to 26,000 overnight. It doesn't, yeah. It's about the 25,000. <laughs> I think the next one's 15. I don't know if I'm ever, ever going to match. I'm only going to get 22,000 followers. Why don't you think you'll get them? I'm pretty surprised at 28,000 people care, let alone another 22,000. Mate, it's a stunning shot. I said from. It's just one photo, I two said, mice. No, I, I, thought, no, I thought the whole project was interesting. And if you'll just breeze and pass, you're not going to see the mouse. But if you stop and you wait and you look, yeah. you'll see it, which is exactly how you view your photo. So, Which yeah. is what it's all about. Yeah. You want to encourage people to look at wildlife in a different way. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just all about seeing... The main points are, it's all about seeing wildlife in a different way. It's especially important with wildlife that you see on your doorstep and people can relate to every day. Over, 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 over half the world now lives in urban areas whose only wildlife on a day-to-day -day basis may be pigeons, rats and mice. So, like, in order to relate to most of the world population, instead of some critically endangered animal on the other side of the world, you've got to show them what's amazing about their wildlife and how they can appreciate that and see that. Like, how can they learn to love nature if they don't see the beauty in just their local back door stuff? Yeah. Which I'm a big believer in, so urban wildlife for a I lot mean, of have reasons. have you seen any of my videos? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It was great to get the chance to sit down with Sam and hear all about it, and I was happy to see that 30 different TV, newspaper and radio interviews over two or three weeks hadn't gone to his head. Rather than getting carried away with it all, he was focusing on how he could maximise this opportunity to encourage people to care about wildlife by making it relatable. Even with all this going on, he was keen to talk about the plans for his next project. He mentioned he'd be going back to the cemetery next week and asked if I wanted to join him, and of course I said yes. But sadly, before his project really got going, something got in the way. Good evening. The coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades. And that's why we've been asking people to stay at home during this pandemic. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. And it brings us to today, and me being stood outside this locked gate waiting for Sam, it will hopefully update me on how he's fared with this photography project over the last few weeks, which I know he's been checking and updating and carrying on with as part of his daily exercise. So it should be interesting. I'm excited to catch up with him. How have you been? Yeah, good man. Set up a small competition. Got some, some questionable oh, judges in. It's well dark. Yeah, it's, uh, you get lost here for two or three hours and you literally think the sunset and you go out and it's bright as day. Something I've learned is these badges are quite timid, quite nervy, it's quite frustrating, can't really do much about that. So basically the solution I've come up with is pretty simple, just sticking a longer lens on the camera trap um, and just setting the camera back um, so the badges and fox and stuff won't be as affected by it. I've so not seen much that, I, that I'm aware of, long lens camera Long traps. lens, 50mm. Interesting. Uh, that is interesting, isn't it? <laughs> you can see that I've mastered the beam. <laughs> <laughs> Big check. Yeah, yeah. Let's um, see what you got. But it's just triggering right now. There we go. That's not bad, is it? Oh, that's good. That's so you got them out of the tree. Oh, excellent. That's. So what I have is, it's, I've got some infrared Bushnell camera traps, which are a lot more reliable than my stills camera setup. So basically, what that means is every time that my stills camera misses a shot, I can see exactly what I've missed from the Bushnell, which is a really fun activity. So that's what I'm doing right now, and I'm pretty sure I've missed something amazing, which is going to upset me a lot. Yes, Fox can confirm. <laughs> um, Fox, yeah, exactly the perfect position. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. Couldn't be more perfect. Oh, why did the wind have to blow my flash off the tree? Why is that a thing? Um, yeah, I'm going to try and hold it. Yeah, okay. For those of you who've been following this channel, you'll understand that... Um, I know the pain Sam is going through right now. I think the pursuit of anything worth doing or having is going to be full of ups and downs. Unfortunately, this was one of the lower, more frustrating points for Sam. Though I do think it's worth pointing out that over the last few months, he had already had a fair bit of success with some really cool shots of rats. This got me thinking. 
Even with all his recent successes, including the shots on this current project, he still persists through all the frustrations and setbacks. This borderline obsession with getting the shot is something I and I think many photographers or creatives can relate to, but I've always struggled to explain it. So a few weeks later I sent him a message asking what he thinks it is that keeps him coming back for more. He replied with this voice note. I would say that in wildlife photography you can never you can never complete it, you can never finish it, you can never you can never take the best photograph either, you know, for you or of, of a species or whatever. There's always there's always more to do and I think that's what what draws me so much to the field is, you know, there's always more to do, there's always a better job you can do, there's always another story. Um, so yeah, that just keeps me coming back more and more with wildlife photography. Um, and that isn't even just global, that's, you know, locally. You can never, you can never take every photo possible, there's always, there's always more and there's always better you can do. And I think that's a good place to leave it. If you enjoyed this video, why not like, share and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on notifications and check out the mystery link below. And as always, thank you to my patrons for supporting these videos and helping to make them possible. Thank you for watching.